Anger. <laughs> yeah. So I have a lady when she I sits. Lady. I have a lady that comes to treat when, when she sits down. She can't taste food. It's happened only a few times. It's not all the time. When she stands up, she can taste the food. Mm. I have no idea. I said, oh, I'll ask somebody. <laughs> okay, a few options. I mean, oh, I have to sort sense. of see in a way. But I'm thinking a few old. things. That, oh, sorry? I would say that long is her primary uh, autoimmune on that as well. Oh, she has some autoimmune issues? Yes, okay. not being officially diagnosed, okay. but the doctor said, I think you're having it. It seems to help that protocol. Got you. Um, well, here's what I'm thinking. When you're sitting, often what will happen is you'll, well, obviously you're congesting this area, yeah. but for a lot of people when they're sitting, they're going to sink. So it could be a lung thing, but it also could be that the whole REM line here kind of gets squished, uh -huh. and especially REM 12. So, so my question to you is when she lies down, yeah. okay, I'm not asking if she's going to taste food lying down. Yeah. What does what does her abdomen look like? Forget the palpation. But what does it look like, just sight wise? Is she's there anything quite young. Do? What's quite young? She is sorry. She's quite young. So do you mean her physical? What she physically yeah. looks like? Yeah. She's. I would say she's quite slim. Mm -hmm. She's quite well toned. Okay. Um, she's. Does she have a short waist or you know long something? I mean, is there oh, some no, weird? No, I would say she was about five. Four, it's quite average. There's nothing no, no, no. I mean in proportion. Like when you look at the torso, is that you know, like sometimes people you say, how come your navel's all the way up there, right, no, or yeah. something like that. Not that I'm thinking of. Okay. I mean, that I've noticed, but I'm gonna have a look. So I'm, I'm assuming that when, when she sits down, she, two things can happen. Either she's congesting something in her torso, or she's doing this to okay. her neck, mm -hmm. and that, and therefore she, you know, so. I would observe the way she sits okay. and see if there's something you can, and then see it, w what part is the one that she might be congesting and therefore is a, pro is a problem, and then you can try and address that with needles, etc. But, you know, without that it's hard, I mean, yeah, yeah, there, there's, yeah, the Sun Tzu Niao protocol for cannot taste when, when sitting is <laughs> yeah, not, yeah, not, in, not in me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so. You know, unfortunately, I don't have. Um, oh, does anybody know how to get the slides? Well, oh, okay, oh, she's yeah. upstairs. You do know. <laughs> 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 On that way. Yeah. 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 I know that. No, that's her. You do that as well. It was on. on. No, it was after that. You will do. You will do that. I will now. Well, now the computer is going to do that. Any more questions? I have a patient that has <coughs> insomnia. She uh -huh. has had insomnia since having her three children uh -huh. uh, 30 years ago. And it got worse with each child. Um, and she then had some uh, like postnatal psychosis. And Some what? Postnatal psychosis. Oh, okay, yes. Mm -hmm. And um, suffered with a lot of depression and anxiety. And she experiences now, so kind of 30 years on, um, this pain at REM 15 and pain at 20. When she wakes, she usually wakes at about 3 in the morning and sometimes at 5 in the morning, but she gets very few hours of sleep. Mm -hmm. um, and honestly, almost any acupuncture points seem to reduce that, but it comes back. Gotcha. I've been treating her for years, and she's been treated by other acupuncturists yeah, for a few yeah. years before. So. <laughs> um, yes. so what you're describing is, is a pattern that we call stagnant blood in the head, and you're even saying she has pain in 20. Yeah. So remember we talked about it yesterday, the stagnant blood in the head is, you know, um, from too much from something got torn or, or displaced around REN4 in the lower dantian and yeah. it, it flushes up to the upper dantian and therefore creating depression or in this case psychosis. And, and on the way you have the REN15. Uh, so the protocol for that supposedly is spleen 6, spleen 9, lung 5, plus pericardium. Plus pericardium meaning check pericardium 8. If it's painful, do pericardium 3 and 5. 
metal wire. If it's not painful, pericardium 8, you can do either pericardium 6 or pericardium 4, according to whatever, whichever one releases the best or the most for, of whatever. Um, so that's the, so basically it's very much like the blood pressure protocol, except you're not using under the third toe, but you are using lung 5. I, just I will try that. Lung 5, spleen 6, spleen 9. Yeah. Plus pericardium. Meaning you check pericardium 8 and go, go from there. <laughs> Do you ever mox a do 20? I never mox a do 20. I just saw that in Kiko's book and I thought I'm sure. Yeah, oh, well, yeah, I, I, yeah, you could do lots of things, but you know, um, maybe for nose or for something, I don't know. But you know, with most people, like, you know, you could, for some people, you might be able to se separate the hair and put hairpins on and, and get enough of a, you know, like a path there that you can put moxa. Some people, um, you know, you be, might be willing to have. Have you cut some hair off? Uh, I think doing mox on do 20 is a very nice theoretical thing that you can put in books, but mm -hmm. in practice, I think most most of us are not likely to be doing mox on do 20. You know, it's like mox on do 20 belongs to you know Buddhist monks who who do you know no because it's mm -hmm. there's you know you burn yourself here as a sign of you know having taken the body sap for a vow. It's it's actually it's supposed to be. I'm going into it. it it's it, the medicine Buddha in, emulated himself, um, you know, and that, that that's why you get Buddhist monks. That's a, that's a tradition in, in Asia. No, it's not a tradition exactly, but you know that's why you see it in Asia that some monks or nuns maybe will emulate themselves, you know, burn themselves, yeah. um, and it's it's considered um, to be. So this is this is a symbol a symbol of it. It's not it, you know it's not suggested that, that that's. What, and the, the, it's a, it, the capacity to burn yourself for, for the sake of others is what that represents. So otherwise, I don't have any idea about who to do some to 20. <laughs> totally not in my uh, realm. I'm, I'm not the medicine Buddha. <laughs> Can I ask about a gentleman who has, he, he says, noise here. It, it, yeah. it could be tinnitus. Uh, but it, it's it's this side of his yeah. head which can stretch to, the, to this side. Um, he also is uh, managing director of firms. So he's in you know he's under a lot of stress, um, but he, see, he seems to cope very well. So he says. Um, and uh, but he's you know he, he wakes up early. Sometimes he can't get to sleep. But he does wake up early. And sometimes he can't get back to sleep. Um, how would you treat that? Would you, would you treat it in, in relationship to a tinnitus? I don't think so. No. I, I, because the way he describes it, that's not the way people describe tinnitus. By the way, anybody who comes to me for tinnitus, or, or calls and says they want to come to tinnitus and say, hey, if you want to come, you may, then I'm suggesting to you not to not. Well, I've had good, good sessions with tinnitus. Good. Um, I'll send them to you. To be perfectly honest. <laughs> I've got an expert in England. Yeah. <laughs> this is TCM stuff. Not, yeah, not, it's fine. Not I don't care what it is. And, you know, it's, it's worked. I mean, I've oh. been very impressed. Yeah. I have to uh, say, tinnitus over the years has been very treat. difficult. Yeah. And, but most people don't describe it. I think when, when what he is describing is probably more related to his neck. It's almost like, I think that what he's describing is what other people might say, I got a, you know, I, I hear it creaking. Yeah. I, I understand that it's not the same noise as a cracking. It's the same noise. I, I, think, I get the impression he says, is it, because I ask him, how's it going? Um, well, you know, he doesn't notice it while he's busy and working. It's at the end yeah, of the day yeah, yeah, yeah. when it's, it almost gives me the impression that it's more like a kidney deficient tinnitus. That, shh, Okay, it may, I, I hear, okay, but a lot of things come with when, when the person is weaker. Mm. I still, you know, because if he's describing it, okay, if this is, you know, I, I don't, without seeing, etc., you know, but if it's, he's describing basically the mastoid and behind the mastoid, yeah. the things that it connotes for me are, try using use liver 13, yeah. Possibly Yao Tong Shui, which you might be using anyway because of just TCM style. Um, and the thing that it connotes for me, other than that, it connotes for me that there is 
And the issue for me is, I think it might come from his use of the neck. So again, when he is tired and he's been using his neck a certain way, it's going to start. But I, I, my sense is that it's somewhat struck, somehow, I, the sense I'm getting is that it's more structural. Um, in, in terms of the neck rather than either structural or internal in terms of the ear. Because people don't describe tinnitus as, as no. here. They describe tinnitus inside or inside yeah. the ear. But also interestingly, he developed it or became aware of it after he had the ears syringed. What does ear syringed mean? Clean that wax. Mm -hmm. Oh, not with a candle. No, 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 no. Water. Water. Oh, okay. Yeah, then it kind of leads you more to the ear, although when this, I don't know, you know, he could have been like in a weird I mean, position. I have been doing GB uh, t uh, 20 mm -hmm. and also uh, the, you know, squeezing the ear and then the GB point mm -hmm. lateral to that. Yeah. Um, on one occasion, I did do liver 13. But, you know, he, he relaxes, uh, but on this occasion, you know, nothing's, nothing's really changed. You know, he, he says, well, it, I don't really notice it until the end. Of, I mean, it's not as if it's a big issue. Right, so you can't really check it. And it's difficult to check, because like, people I've seen before, it has been such a big issue. Right. Yeah, the thing is, if any, any, those are the symptoms are, you know, so you have to check the neck, you have to check the mastoid to see. All these issues that they don't have when they're when they're with you are always harder to treat because mm -hmm. <laughs> they're like, how do you know if you if you you're getting it? You know, that's um, so you have it's to find those yes, think about it can. sometimes, and then yeah. I think to myself, well, if you've got to think about it, I think this is my case yeah, yeah, I'm thinking, saying. not me saying. Yeah. I think well, you've got to think about it. Then clearly, it must have changed <laughs> because before he didn't. You know, he says yes, I've yeah. got this. Yeah. Now he's saying, well. You know, you know, I can, you know, when I think yeah. about, when I don't think about it, well, I think, well, maybe it's, it has reduced. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. And it's so, it, it, and now it's going to come in a difficult one. I think to myself, well, I don't know where, where we are now. I mean, for me, what I would do is I would just, this, so this is a case that, you know, where I don't know what the symptom is. I take it from the medical history and take it from the abdominal findings and do what you can we'll and hope for the best. Yeah. And but my my theory, given the little that I know about it, is that what I would start is I would start with the neck, yeah. figuring out if there's something weird in the neck. So look at anything from say T3 upwards. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Anything else before we start? Yeah. The, the pericardium treatment. Uh huh. The pericardium in age isn't painful. Is not painful. It's not painful. Uh huh. Can we not needle pericardium? Age? You could, but who the hell wants to needle pericardium? Age? Right. Hmm? I thought that would be nice. Well, you could if you want, but you can eat a very kind of still keep coming back. Most people <laughs> have. <laughs> well, you know, if you, uh, yeah, I mean, I could advertise SM acupuncture. Uh, <laughs> you know. Yes, those are the people who are very goddamn hate. <laughs> or maybe, you're, maybe you're, your clinic is across a, across a Catholic church. <laughs> well, yeah. So they want to be Jesus. <laughs> you know, uh, it, it's most most people kind of like are. I mean, it's bad enough that I do feet points. That, you know, to to then on top of it. No, because then because the pericardium thing happens a lot. So you know, and most people are not sensitive with pericardium. So it's kind of plus. If you need a pericardium, then you want to turn the hand over. It's a lot hard. You know, I see when they face down. Oh, I see. Yes. Gotcha. Yeah. 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 So yeah. Can't see. That makes sense. Those again. Yeah. Exactly. I don't tell them what I'm about to do. Gotcha. And see, most of them don't even feel it. No. Yeah. Right. No, but I mean, it's great. If you can do it with without them feeling, feeling it, that's fine. Yeah. 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 Yeah
Now they can't manipulate anything. You know, it's it's just a lot harder emotionally for people. Suppose we need to face family, you know. But then probably it's not a big, it's not as big a deal. I would assume. I don't know. Right. Is the patient here? Okay. So yeah, we can do that. Let's wait five. Give her a chance for five more minutes to arrive, maybe. And then in the meantime. Oh my, I didn't get that. Oh, okay. So yeah. Natalie's oh, not coming. Oh, she probably sent the clinic. Oh, right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so yeah. let's. Thank you. So before yeah. we take someone on the table, let's try and finish the theoretical stuff, so to speak. Is that good? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or would you rather? Mm -hmm. Hold on. The next person is at three o'clock. Well, I'm just thinking of ways to sort of um, intersperse things, um, so so that it's, it, you're not doing the same thing constantly. Because I know it's afternoon, so people kind of tend to fall asleep a little bit easier. So, shall we do this for yes. maybe yes. 10 minutes? Mm -hmm. and then take a so, sugar metabolism is very important because every cell in your body uses sugar, and it affects your moods. Okay, I mean, it very clearly affects your moods. Okay, so, um, on the front it's spleen 3, uh, and on the back it's T11, T12 which you're using it in, on most people anyway because of the arch of the back. Okay. And diabetics, you use spleen 3, and you're using adrenal treatment. So adrenal treatment is kidney, any kidney below the knee, plus kidney 27, okay, is considered adrenal treatment. Okay. But kidney 27 is always needled in towards the sternum. Okay. So, the original treatment is kidney 6 and 27, but it can be kidney 7 and 27, it can be kidney 9 and 27, it can be kidney 7 plus 10 plus 27. So plus, then you add immune, so you have spleen 3, adrenal, immune, and the OD point. So the OD point is you go from the navel to the ribs on the right side only, at 45 degrees, halfway is OD point. Okay? which is stomach tw right side stomach 22. Stomach 22 is called gate of gate, one man. Okay? So all this, the sphincter of OD is also, it's a double gate from gallbladder as well as pancreas. Okay? So the, the name of the point suggests that this kind of, you know. And on the back diabetics, again, T11, T12. What and direction do you need for the OD point? Pretty much just straight in, no, no big deal. Okay. Is this for anybody who's got diabetes, even if it's medicated and controlled? Yes. So yes. if they say, I've got diabetes, but it's all fine, regulated. It's, it's all fine and regulated, but you're still taking something, which means that meaning there's still something in the body that's, that's diabetic. Okay. <laughs> and you'll find that a lot of people have sugar issues, diabetics and not, you know, because most people are addicted to carbs. Mm -hmm. So... Um, but yeah, the diabetics, yeah, a lot of these things, for example, people can, people can come and say, yeah, I'm diagnosed as hypothyroid, but I'm taking Synthroid. You're still treating the thyroid because energetically, that's what the body has. You know, the fact that it's being taken care of or masked or whatever um, by medication. So I understand, because they're saying, please only treat my ankle because I don't want to spend the money on you treating my diabetes because I'm already taking whatever, metformin or whatever, or insulin or whatever. The problem is that without treating the diabetes, the ankle doesn't get better. Okay? How, would you do this treatment like every week on that? Or? Yes, right. yeah. So someone who's a diabetic or has strong family history of diabetes, if they come say for back pain, I start with this. And then, if I need to, I'll add other points to address the back pain. So if they were coming to you for back pain, mm -hmm. and they mentioned the diabetes mm -hmm. just about when you're starting to pop it, and you fix the backache, and, and as far as they're concerned, the back's fixed, so they don't need to carry on coming in to see you. Right. If you've not got the diabetes, or the diabetes hasn't changed, would you still keep bringing them in to get the diabetes? Uh, that's up to them. I don't, I don't, I don't tell them what to, what to do, okay. <clears throat> but they, they, they know, know, they know that I'm treating the diabetes. Right. Okay. You know, I, I would make sure that they, you know, I mentioned to them, see, I'm not the kind of practitioner who just, throw, who just does the needles and doesn't talk to them. 
I tell them what, the, what yeah. I'm doing. So if I'm finding something or if I think something is worth mentioning, you know, I'm talking, I'm telling them, okay, this is what you have. This is, you know, this will benefit you if, if you, you know, if you reduce your sugar consumption or carbs consumption or something. So they know that we're dealing with that. If they then say, I don't give a damn about my diabetes, but my ankle's fine, so goodbye, that's totally fine. And if they say, you know, my ankle's great, but now can we just concentrate on just the diabetes, that's fine too. Okay. So it, it's kind of up to, for me, I, you know. Yeah, you leave it up to them. Yeah, you just, you just, yeah, but I tell them, yes, your ankle is, you know, I'm treating diabetes because that's your, that's your strongest um, uh, diversion of thing that energy that diverts stuff out in your body that's problematic in your body you know so but I will ne it will not it's not likely for me for it to happen the way you described it that you're treating the ankle and then they're telling you that you know because what happens at the, my intake form I ask for medical history mm -hmm. I want to know and I know a lot of TCM people don't ask for medical history I really want to know the medical history and I give them a space for childhood teenage and adult so they, you know, there. And I've had once a chiropractor came to me, and uh, I said to him, you know, I'm looking at this form, and I'm like, you know, all your symptoms are left-sided. Is there any heart disease in the family? Anything weird? You know? No, oh, no, yeah, everything's fine. He lies on the table, and I'm like, what is this box here? <laughs> oh, this is my pacemaker. <laughs> and so no, so people forget. I mean, so you know, someone who's number one in the healthcare field, number two. A pacemaker, to forget you have a pacemaker is pretty serious. And three, after I even asked if there's some heart disease in the family, like he's not part of the family. <laughs> so, but generally speaking, people, you, people will write 90% of what they have on the, on the form. Um, because I, I give it free format. I ask for the age and when it, what, what, what it is to name it in some manner. You see, my aunt, she has... She has got a metal heart valve, a metal yeah. heart valve, and so, she, but she doesn't consider herself as having a heart problem. And it's like you can't walk more than fifty paces without you can sit down and fan. So <laughs> <laughs> I have a leg problem. <laughs> it's like, mm, but she doesn't. Well, no, it's yes, fixed. So I don't have a heart problem, yeah. and it's just like, well, but, but in acupuncture, it doesn't work. I mean, for my kind of acupuncture, it doesn't work like that. People who say, you know, sometimes people come to me from other practitioners, and they say, well, my other practitioners could, you would only do this, you know, because some people, no, there, are, there is a school of acupuncture that says, treat one thing at a time, kind of thing. And I'm like, no, you're treating the body. I'm not treating this problem. I'm treating your body in order to address this problem. If the problem hasn't been addressed, then, you know, once your body, if, if we say acupuncture is about bringing people to balance, how can we then say, oh, but I only treat one symptom at a time? It doesn't make sense. So, you know, so I understand that for the patients, they're going, well, basically, but I don't, I'm, I can't be a heart patient. I, this is fine. I have a cardiologist who dukes at it every three years and, and gives me a bill of health. But, you know, for me as an acupuncturist, I have to relate to everything you've had in the past. And, and I tell them very clearly, you know, why I'm asking, I tell them, the form is there so that I can see what you've had in the past. Because what you've had in the past may control what's happening to you now. Okay? So that was sugar. And um, we talked about this viscerotosis, which a lot of sugar people will have. So you have it, you know, you, even though you're not big. So usually these people come and they're big and they're full. But, you know, because her capacity to tilt her pelvis so far forward, she can she kind of has this viscerotosis. Where for L5 it just falls forward. But usually it's the very large person or someone who's had a hysterectomy. Or oh, women, um, you know, like, oh, sorry, um, like Irish Catholic who've you've given 11 births, you know, like, no, because you're pushing down so many times. And, you know, then by the time they're 60, that, you know, that they have to wear diapers, you know, they're, they're, it, it still happens every so often. So, you know, or, or if the uterus has been removed, okay, um, then because not, there's, now there's nothing here and everything starts falling. So we use stomach 13 to kind of lift it up. Plus supporting points are gallbladder 26, inner yin, and immune points. Okay? But you can occasionally get a very thin person who has that, and they just have that bill that kind of spills this way. 
everything falls into the ignore. They'll have pressure pain on um, stomach 30 area, stomach 30, gallbladder 26 and 28. And often don't, do not exclude this possibility for someone who comes to you for back pain, whether it's upper back or lower back, um, or a woman with very large breasts, okay? They push you down. So it's something, it's something that you, you do see more often than you might uh, imagine, you know, and even in thin people. So, and then this is the stagnant blood in the head pattern, you know, for, you know, the so-called postpartum depression type, that something happened at 24 and now shows into 20, and it can be pressure pain, it can be heat, um, so it, it, it can be different, different sensations here. And, um, and that, that pattern is spleen 6, spleen 9, pericardium, and lung 5. Okay. What's the tooth fairy? Oh, under. <laughs> <laughs> Mythical creature that <laughs> takes. Yes, from. from Haven't you heard of the tooth fairy from the 12th century in Hansel and Gretel? <laughs> so, remember we talked about the Mushu yeah. uh, protocol? Kidney six and inner yin and mushu and then either stomach nine, UB two, or under the teeth they may have, you know, tightness. They're trying to so, so that's the tooth fairy point. It's under it's it's under the gums here. Okay. So um, so liver can show also now liver will show so we saw him, the guy who was on this table uh, with Anthony. Um, it can show either on liver 14 or under the ribs. And in liver, this is one place where I do have excess and deficiency. Okay? Liver will always have excess or deficiency. It's not one thing. Okay? And it often will have mixed. But if it's deficiency, then it's right liver one. Deficiency meaning they say dull pain. Okay? Another method is you pinch. If that, you're not sure if they say sharp or dull. You pinch on the right under the ribs, you pinch on the left. If you're picking up more skin, if it feels thicker to them on the right side, that's considered a liver deficiency. Where are you picking up that skin? Where are you picking up that skin? Under the ribs. Oh, under the ribs. Yeah, not on the ribs. Okay. On the ribs, you, you know, but under the ribs. And you, you'll very quickly, if you start doing that on people, you'll very quickly be able to tell I'm picking up more skin. But the patient will tell you that it feels odd on the right side. Mm. You no, know, it feels normal on, normal, normal on the left. More than on the left. Yes, when you're pinching. You, you, you feel like I'm pin there's more stuff coming up here than here. I have that. Never mind. It's the shirt. That's deficient. If okay. the pinching test is for deficiency, mm -hmm. okay, the thickening of that of that of the uh, fascia under the skin, mm -hmm. that's a deficiency. Okay, excess is the one that goes ah! like this guy was an excess. Mm -hmm. So remember on him, I tried. He, it's kidney seven, spleen seven, heart three, pericardium four. Mm -hmm. That's the combination for true physical liver damage. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's the excess tumor. That tumor originally came in Nagano was treating atomic bomb victims, okay, because the damage is the liver. And that idea comes, there's, I believe it's chapter 76 of the Nanjing, where it, it says, uh, with liver, um, how come with, you know, uh, with liver excess, if you, if you tonify metal, it doesn't work, because metal is supposed to control wood, okay? And it's, basically it's asking, how come the, when the eastern mountains misbehave, why, the, why do the western mountains do not control it? Something like that. Meaning, it's basically the western is the lung and the eastern is the, the liver. And so the answer is, for this you have to tonify the mother and reduce the son. Which is, if you recall, a contradiction because you tonify the mother for deficiency and you reduce the son for excess. What it's saying is that the liver is a special case where even when it looks like excess, there's some deficiency underneath. Okay? You always treat the liver as having, so even if you look at herbal formulas that have, let's say, gardenia in them, jutsu, okay, you will always see that they put either peony, uh, baixiao, or dangwei in it, you know, to soften, to give liver, to build up the liver, to protect the liver blood. That's a very common strategy that you have to protect liver blood. And if you look at the formulas that are less, quote, less harsh, you know, for example, Xiaoyao San is like a famous formula for, you know, 
um, releasing liver qi congestion. It's actually not a liver qi formula at all. It's a spleen, spleen and, and blood for nourishing formula. If you nourish the blood, the liver is like a sponge. It's supposed to have a lot of blood. If it doesn't have the blood in it, then it gets thorny. And that's what it can look like liver qi congestion, liver yang rising, whatever, whatever. But actually, if you just give it blood, it will swell up and be happy. Okay, so just just to kind of to note those those strategies actually come from you know there are classical sayings around them. Um, if you have fatty liver, okay, so people with high cholesterol perhaps might have fatty liver. Um, that's right stomach twenty five, right liver thirteen. The full protocol, if someone's huge, okay, there are people when they get on the table, you know, they, they barely fit on the table, okay, they start spilling over. That's huge. And so that kind of person, for example, if you do a leg on the, on, uh, a, leg on the point, a point on the leg, under, below the knee, you often have to shuttle that point with, a, with something above the knee to help that point move. So that person, again, you have to shuttle the treatment. So you actually, instead of just right stomach 25, right liver 13, you're starting the treatment from here. Left gallbladder 26, left stomach 27, right 6, then stomach 25, liver 13. You've kind of started some momentum, okay? Because they're so big, you know, when someone's really big, all this fat is pushing against the needle. You know, all this, you know, it's like you, we, in Chinese medicine, you say they have they dampness. So everything is like, so you have to like, really push against the dampness much more than a, a regular person. Okay? And then um, we have the liver, the liver detox protocol, which is kidney 9 and large intestine 15. Okay? So that basically usually comes from the um, history. If you're unsure if it's liver excess or liver deficiency, you often kidney 9 will do a good job. Okay? Um, and gallbladder 28 on the inguinal towards the leg can also release the liver. Okay? And whatever type they are on the front, on the back, you saw we did on him, left UB35 releases right UB1718 area. Okay? Someone who has brain damage, because that can also cause, you know, shen issues, so to speak. Um, L2 uh, is the, the, the brain stem basically ends at L2. That's why, for example, when they give you um, epidurals or whatever, it, it's always below L2. If you look at an anatomy, no, I'm not seeing one of those here. I thought that one. Thing. But often, if you look at anatomy books, there's like this white thing that they, they, you know, they show you down the spine, it ends at L2. That's, I'm not sure if that's considered the spinal cord or exactly what it is. Yes, I think so. Okay, so the thing is, so it, it's almost like it, the L2 is like the Jing Well point of the brain, if you like, something along those lines, okay? But it's the beginning of the brain in a sense, because the other side of that is the brain. So I'm not sure if that's the, if that's the, the brain stem or it's the cauda equina, whatever it is, I'm not sure. Anyway. Um, Above kidney three, so I talked to you about kidney three for thyroid, need, for hypothyroid supposedly, you needle kidney three towards the Achilles. This is different. This will be above kidney three, between kidney three and kidney seven. There'll be a nodule. In people with brain damage, often there'll be a nodule. And you needle it actually upwards. So it's a very different you know, uh, kind of kidney three than um, you know, you, you'd use for thyroid both in location and, and the needling method. And um, behind liver three, remember, this is the Xiao Yin Jue, the Jue family. <coughs> that's another point that's very good for brain. Then you have the people have true wiry pulse. True wiry pulse meaning it's a strong excess pulse, does not disappear on pressure, does not disappear on pressure. Those a lot of Parkinson's patients, for example, will have that kind of pulse. Those are gallbladder 39 plus spleen 9 type people. Okay? And if you've had a head injury, uh, so of course you want to release the SCM, okay? use Sancho 8, but on the back use Ihikon, UB40, UB37, uh, and UB60. But it's not exactly UB40, it's, it's more lateral, so it's more like UB39 or UB38, even above 
38 is above, right? That's okay. So the, there's a, the triangular fossa, okay? Uh, the, is that what it's called? The, in the back here, there's popliteal fossa, right? And it's like a triangle that moves up a little bit. If you take the lateral side of it, that's where UV38 is. And I needle, if I'm needling above, I'm needling from the lateral side of the fossa of the triangle, from the lateral side of the triangle, I needle towards the center. Okay? Can, can I just ask? Yes. Um, I think I might have just gone off a bit in my head. <laughs> See, he can't. <laughs> in terms of the brain damage, um, L2, are we saying we needle L2? As, as needle L2, is L2. yes. And, and not as and do two as well, or just to L2? I'm sorry, the two tubes were supposed to say L2. My mistake. Right. Okay, thank you. It's my mistake. It ends at L2. Yeah. So uh, what happens when you type and it just <laughs> kind of happens, yeah. So that do to is a mistake, it should say L2, sorry. Now, okay, end of protocols. Um, so, yeah, let's do this very quickly and then we'll start the patient. Uh, so you have, when you're dealing with Shannon emotions, there are times when it's easier to make up a story just from what the person tells you. So for example, um, so within, there are many ways to look at, eight, at, at the eight extraordinary vessels, okay? So this is just one way, okay? And within this way, I'm not looking so much at the opening points, okay? So with the, for, for me, the eight extraordinary vessels have to do with the, the cycles of seven and eight, remember, in the Suen. So it's, it's something, it, there is a way to look at the eight extra vessels as reservoirs of qi and blood when the ordinary meridians get full, it sends, but it sends it to the extraordinary meridians. But there is another method of look, looking at the extraordinary meridians, which is they're the basic building blocks of the human being. Now, a lot of Japanese practitioners look at the, these, this basic building block as like an octagonal or whatever, some sort of shape. You have a front, and you have sides, and then you have a girdle. And that kind of makes up the, the eight vessel. Um, that's not what I'm talking about. So when you build a house, okay, you have a blueprint, okay, you, you, you design a house. This is the chunk, okay, you have to have a blueprint. Who is this person going to, you know, so it's not a house, it's a person, okay. Who is this person going to be? What kind of culture are we going to see? The, the way the Chinese look at it is the ancestral court sends down the Hun in order to experience life, let's say, in the 21st century. So they're deciding, oh, we are curious to see what the 21st century is like, and we're, let's send someone who will be um, in a woman's body and in this kind of religion, this particular culture, you know, we'll send them to, to South Africa. We want to see what South Africa is like now. Well, we remember it from 100 years ago. We want to see where those coolies are now. I don't know, whatever, something like that. They're interested, and I don't know why they're interested, but the ancestral court is interested to experience. And they set up the parameters. So in the Chinese understanding, you chose your life circumstances. Okay, well, not you, but your ancestors did for you. Okay, so it's not by chance that you were born a certain way, okay, to a certain culture, to a certain amount of money, a certain amount of educational um, offer to you by, by society, etc. There is, a, that's what the ancestors decided they wanted to experiment with. So that's your blueprint, that's your charm. So some people will say, I have a problem with my blueprint. I don't like my nose. You know? Now, if they go and change their nose, it's not a problem. Okay? But if they keep obsessing about, I don't like my nose, it, that, you know, I'm, I'm making it sort of a little bit uh, too easy, but that becomes a chong issue. Or they have a problem with my gender, my uh, national identity, my social identity. All those things are kind of like a little bit predetermined for us. That's a chong issue. Okay? And so just to understand that this is to do with, it's like from before you're born, it's like that. Okay? So that would be a chunk statement. Then, one, so back to the house. 
once I build a house, I need the resources, like the bricks, the mortar, etc., to build a house. That's the rent channel. Okay? So the rent channel is like our attachment or our connection to the mother figure, okay? whether it's mother or not. Okay? So uh, when mommy gets to be a little, you know, you know, children basically should have this, this interesting relationship with their mother where they play hide and seek. I want mommy to know where I am, but I also want to be independent. It's, it's a very weird phenomenon, and, but it's just the nature of it. So if mama is going to be one of those mothers that say, don't play in the sand because you get dirty, you know, the child starts getting ren my issue because they're never able to go far, far away from mama. Or maybe they want to, they're always going to go far away from mama because they want to play in the sand. They don't care if they get dirty. So it all, you know, it can come in many ways. But these, these issues of attachments, that then will, or lack of attachment, either one, that may show up as gynecological issues, digestive issues, or asthma issues, these are where the REN comes through, can belong to the REN. And then you have the actual construction from this material. There's no point in just you know, going to Home Depot and, and dumping all the bricks you know, in where you want to build. You, actually, you now have to actually do something with the bricks, right? And the pipes and whatever else. That actual construction is the do channel. And so the, the, this, the actual capacity, the, this curiosity to move out to the world. So, and you can see this very clearly in the do channel because the child is curled, and eventually what the child is doing is they're moving their head, they're starting to activate, do 16, do 14, they're looking out, right? They're still, they're still lying down, they're still crawling. And then they're starting to do this, they're activating Ming Man. So eventually they start crawling. Okay? So it's the activation of the do that makes the child be able to move out to the world. Okay? And basically separate from the parents and become an independent entity. So now, now that you've built your house, um, you're going to... Um, let's see. I have to get expressed. Okay. You are going to say, this is the role that this room plays. Okay, I'm going to say, this is my... This is the bedroom. So, well, let's take it back. This is the kitchen. You know, no, it's just easier. Um, this is the role I have in a kitchen. So a kitchen should be, you know, just, just, let's say it should be homey, it should be inviting, it should be this, it should be that, whatever. It should be util or it should be utilitarian, whatever. So this is the chow vessels. What kind of masks, what kind of roles do I take on in my life? Okay. So, you know, if you're a parent. The role you play to your children, who you are to your children, is very different than who you are to your parents. And it's very different than who you are to your friends. My role here as a teacher is very different than my role when I'm sitting in your chair. Okay? Now, it doesn't mean we're totally separate people, but it just means that I've put on a mask. I've taken on a role of being something. Okay? So we're constantly doing that. We'll take you at a moment. <laughs> so, um, so those are the chow vessels. How do I stand up in the world? Yin chow means how I stand up to myself. Yang chow is how I stand up to the world. And as I told you yesterday, I don't fully understand yang chow, so I can't talk about it. So, so here it gets a little bit interesting. So the yin chow basically starts at kidney six, jiao hai, okay, to illuminate the sea which is the sea of life, the ocean of life. And the next point here is going to be Jiao Xin, kidney eight, to build the trust. Can I look at my life and trust it? And then the next thing that happens, it comes in the, through the inside of the thigh, through the genitals and through the diaphragm, where most of us are going to have problems in life. Okay, most of us have issues with our sexuality, and actually, it's, they're related. It's, it's your heart and your uh, lower jaw. You know, so most of us in a post-60s era think that we have, a, we, have, we have freed up our lower jaw, but it doesn't mean that we've freed up our heart. Okay? 
So we will have problems in these two areas usually. So if we overcome these obstacles, the next thing that happens is we come to stomach nine, welcome human. So I can welcome who I am. Once I've, I'm willing to shed light, to look at my life, to shed life, to trust the process of life, to look at the issues of relating to people in terms of physicality and in terms of emotionality, then I can welcome who I am. And when I do, that's when I can have um, clear understanding. Jing Ming, the better one can be translated either, either as bright, bright vision, bright eyes, or as uh, clear understanding. Because Ming can be, mean understanding, or it can be um, um, uh, uh, light, either way. So then you're offering the world your true, your, your true self. Otherwise, you're always just playing masks with them. So many people will describe something along those lines, that their problem, when you start talking to them psychologically about their issues, they may describe something that may sound like yin cha. Okay? And then you have the yin way. And the yin, uh, and the yin way of the yang, yes? Oh, okay. Okay, so why don't we take the three o'clock and we'll take you after? Will that be okay? Yeah, so let's take the three o'clock and we'll, we'll have five more minutes of thought and we'll take, yeah, bring it down. That'd be great. Fabulous. So, yeah, absolutely. Thank you. So, in your house, you know, every seven or eight years, or maybe 12 years, whatever you choose, but you kind of you redecorate, right? Because if you don't, if you don't re re redo your house, uh, you, you know, it's going to fall apart eventually. So you kind of, most people, at, at a certain, let's say, once a decade, there's like a re reorganization. Yeah. So, and finally, you need, in every house, you need a garbage can. Because... <laughs> or sewage, or whatever, and that's your dye channel. Okay? So in terms of your yin way, it's how do you link, how do you link yourself through time? How do you see yourself in the major transitions in life? Okay, um, you know, so the Chinese say seven or eight years, I can say de a decade or so. It, the exact number is not so important, because as we all know, when you're 49 as a woman, you're not dying. Okay. No, I mean, according to this thing of the Suwan chapter one, it actually doesn't say that. Exactly. What it really says is your physical life is over, and the idea is that then you become a sage. Then your spiritual life can begin, because you're no longer engaged in all this, you know, bullshit of the, the chung, you know, and, and, and the growing of the beard, and the menses, and all that kind of stuff. You know, so we, we are letting go of all the physicality in order to become more spiritual beings. That's one interpretation of Su Wen Wan. The other interpretation is, well, at 49, you're done. Bye-bye, you, know, you know, which obviously is not true. So the number seven or the number eight is not so important. Think about it more and maybe in terms of a decade or whatever it happens to be for that person. It's going to be individual. So for example, I had a woman, this is many, many years ago, but it was an ex extremely good case of something like that. Because she said, I have my, a shoulder problem. And we're trying to deal with it mechanically, and nothing is moving, you know. And she goes, makes me feel, you know, I'm, I'm going to have my 50th birthday. Of course, now I'm thinking, 50? What the hell? <laughs> oh, that's young, girl. <laughs> it's like, but then I was like 30, you know, I was 30-something, and I was like, 50 seemed old, and obviously 50 seemed old. Time. Makes me feel like an old hag. <laughs> that's literally what she said. So, oh, that's yin wei. It's a yin wei statement. Okay, does that make sense? So I did kidney nine on her, and suddenly everything is good with the shoulder. Okay, so the way to apply these is, and I'm not looking at the opening points, I'm looking at the actual meridian, at using the points on the meridian. So if somebody comes to you and, and you think it sounds to you like a chong statement, Something to do with my blueprint, I'm not comfortable with my blueprint. I, I, you know, some people say something like, I don't belong in the century. You know, I should have been born in the Victorian era, something like that. You know, it's not unusual for people to have that sense that they're not in the right place in time. That's a chunk statement, because they can't. You know, we're not all going to become Victorians in order to accommodate them. You know, they have to somehow figure out a way to be who they are comfortably in this society. Okay, so 
or they say something about yin chao, they, you know, whatever the statement is, if it resonates for you, you can investigate. My suggestion is get their permission. I don't just do this and expect. I say to them, how about we tap into this statement and see what happens? And what I usually do is when I need the points, I explain to them the point names. Okay? So I, like in the yin chao, I told you, you know, looking at life, creating trust. Each point that I need, I give them the idea. Not that I expect them to remember. And then I give them 45 minutes to, to light it. Now, so this sounds very much like a TCM style practitioners would, would do. The difference is what I do is I palpate the abdomen. And then what I do is say I decided it's a yin chow thing, or it's a yin wei thing, or it's a chong thing. Let's say it's a chong. I press on spleen four, because if I press on stomach 31, uh, a 30 on the abdomen, which is kind of the beginning of the tongue, that's, you know, it's too close to all the findings. But I might express a stomach 30 and see if it changes. If one of the points on the extraordinary meridian changes lots of things, then it's a, it's, it's a good enough confirmation that, yes, I can use that extraordinary meridian. And I would use it both sides, by the way. Okay? So um, that's another way of looking at things. Give us a few more minutes. Are you okay? <laughs> you are okay, apparently. Okay. Um, then if you look at um, these names here, Do 24 is called the, the uh, courtyard of the Shen. Okay? It's a courtyard when you go to the emperor's house. You, you don't go into the emperor's living room and have an interview. The emperor comes out to this courtyard, in inner courtyard, to see you. Okay? So that's what Ting means, Shen Ting. And Du 23 is called the upper star. How I align myself with the upper star? Du 23 by name, it's the upper star, is going to relate to Ren 3, which is called uh, Zhang Ji, the central pole, which means the north star also. Okay? So just know the problems in Ren 3 and problems in Du 20, they can fix each other. Okay? Um, but Du 23 by Sun Sun Yao is a ghost point. Okay? So I'm, I've changed this, okay, and the reason why this area is so important also because Yamamoto, by the, first of all, it's a Shen area, and so is called Lada 13, the root of the Shen and the courtyard of the Shen, but also the, this is the area that Yamamoto uses um, to diagnose, you know, uh, that this is related to the, uh, not to treat brain, okay, so this is really a slide that, to, to come to this slide. So another sort of more philosophical treatment that I do, because up to now we've done very physically treating this, because the class is called treating the body to treat the shen. But this is kind of, OK, let's use some philosophy. But again, when I use this protocol, I'm going to check that it releases the abdomen so I have confidence, or the neck, or whatever. I have some confidence in it. So exorcism means um, like someone is addicted to something. You know, that's an, it's like an, a foreign entity is invading me. That's an addiction, right? That's one, one way to look at it, okay? So, um, I have what I call the opening signature for an exorcism treatment, and that's do 24, stomach 44, okay? Look at the point names, okay? Shen Ting, the... Uh, the courtyard of the Shen, and mating, stomach 44, the inner courtyard. You want to penetrate the inner part of this person and basically pull out the unwanted guests out of there. Okay? And stomach 44, by the way, is also, is, is a Sun Sun Yao um, uh, ghost point also. Okay? Now, do 24 is not, but 223 is, and they're very close, they only half to the part. So how can you tell the difference? And if you need to do 24 backwards, you basically got to 23. So that's the opening signature. Okay? And then in the treatment, I would probably try and use pericardium 6 because I'm taking off the name of stomach 44, Nei Ting, so Nei Guan, the gate to the inner. And I'll probably use kidney 9, Ju Bin, okay, the guest house. Okay? How do I um, kick out? either occupy my own house, 
be a good guest in my own house or kick out the bad guests in my house. Either way, you can look at it. And then the closing si uh, signature. So, you know, you can think about it like when people write music, there's uh, what do you call overtures and um, I'm not sure how, what these things are called in music, but you know, like when you have an ending, a, an, a, an opening and an ending sort of thing, coda and whatever, something like that. So the closing, what you want to do, you have these, you kicked out, you're trying to kick out the entities from your house. What do you want to do with them? The unwanted entities, so to speak. Okay, so do you, you know, so first of all, the point that you're going to use is likely to be go, go about a 34. Why? Because it's a link. Okay, Ling is a mount, it's a burial ground. Okay, so I'm going to go about a 34. And it's a yang one, okay? It's a yang point, as opposed to a yin point, like yin is 39 or, or paratide is 7. And what you want, what you can, you can kneel the point, and then this is ritualistic, so you can say it's bullshit or whatever, however you, you know, you don't have to take this. You can ask the patient, what do you, you this is something you talk about with the patient, so you're using the body to confirm the points, but you, you're asking the patient, or you're, you're, you're in communication with the patient, it's not just about the body, it's really about the mind. And then you, so they know that you're doing an exorcism treatment on them. Okay, you're, you're not doing it without their knowledge. And then you ask them, what would you like to metaphorically do with these entities? So they might look at you and say, I don't know what the point. Well, would you like to bury them? Would you like to drown them? Would you like to um, burn them? You know, what would you like what would you like to do? Because you have an option. So you can, for example, they say I want to bury them. So you take the needle out of gold out of 34, you take all the needles out, you give it to them, and they can bury those needles. You can also go and burn them. Okay? Or for a burning possibility, you can do mox on gold out of 34. Okay? So it's another idea for treatment. I don't do this terribly often. But I do this to this every so often. And the abdominal findings can be anything as long as they do 24 and stomach 44 did, did, did a fairly good job for a lot of findings. And then the other points that I'm going to use, I'm going to try and keep all the points in that treatment. It's not going to be, oh, let me add one more point. I'm going to keep all the points to the idea of exorcism. They're going to have, it's going to somehow you know, reflect exorcism. So I'm not, I can't just add another point because, oh, it's, by the way, it releases this. So whatever points I'm using better release the whole abdomen. Okay, because I'm, I'm pretty limited in my, in my ability to just go and choose all sorts of weird points. Okay? So, let's see a patient. <laughs>